Hello guys, welcome back to a new tutorial. Today we're going to be doing fire in Cycles Render. So Blender Cycles Render, we're going to be making fire. I'm sorry that I've not recorded in a while. Um, I've just been very busy and yeah. So let's go and get started here. Go ahead and add a sphere and delete the bottom half of it. There we go. Then go ahead and add a cube. Scale it up. Make sure you do not do this in edit mode. And make it pretty tall just to where the fire can uh, stay inside the box. So this is going to be our domain. And this is going to be our emitter. Okay. So go ahead and add a new particle system to this emitter here. This The half sphere. Sphere, sorry. Um, and go ahead and set the particles to about 26,000. That's a lot, yes. But uh, if your computer can't handle that, uh, I guess make it a little less than that. But... Uh, Hopefully it can. So go ahead and inset the lifetime to 30. And as you can see, that happens. Right there. That's not good. We don't want that. So go ahead and turn off the gravity under field weights. Turn off the gravity. Set it to zero. Okay. Now, there will be no gravity. It's just going to be floating in space type of thing. So what you need to do is set the velocity down here, the normal amount to be 0.2. And the random will just set it to be, we'll keep it at 1, or we'll set it to 1. And the object can be 1, and see, the random, we'll set that to 1 uh, under physics. And we'll set the brownie in just a little bit, and that seems like it's good. Change the render amount, the, the render to be point, and the actual render to be none, the display to be point. There we go. Now if you played this, or not played it, uh, I guess played the um, particle, um, that's what it looks like, and that looks pretty crazy. So under our emitter object, you need to set the Z value to be 2, and now that looks a whole lot better. And also our lifetime, we'll just set it to 20. And there we go. So now go ahead and give this emitter object a under the physics, click smoke, and then don't click anything yet. But for the cube here, click smoke and then domain. So a domain is basically holding our smoke and fire. That's basically what that does. So now you go back to our emitter object and click flow. Okay, once you've done that, change the flow source to be particle system. Under particle system, change it to be our particle system that we just created. The flow type will be fire and smoke. And we'll enable initial velocity. Go to our cube. Set the divisions to be pretty high. We want this to be high enough, but not too high to destroy our computer. So go ahead and set this to 54. That's a pretty high amount, so make sure your computer can handle, like, uh, basically go up by tens until your computer starts getting very slow. Okay, enable smoke high resolution, and set the noise method to be FFT, and we're not going to show the high resolution, and then click smoke adapt adaptive domain. Okay, next, we just, if we played this, as you can see, fire and smoke comes out, and it looks pretty cool. Something will happen when you do this, though. Um, if you do press Alt-A to play our smoke fire animation here, um, your computer will go very slow. It will animate very slowly because it's basically baking it into Blender. So if you press Alt-A, I did just a little bit. Let's see if we can get it to work. There we go. I just did 30 frames. As you can see, it goes very slow. Okay, so once you get enough done, you will uh, be able to actually set the material up. So go ahead and change this render type to be Cycles Render, add a new material to the domain, and then name it Fire. Go into the node editor, and then now we can start. So what we're going to want to do is add a add shader, and then we need to add two other ad shaders. Actually, we're going to add one ad shader and then just an emission. Now, as you can see, this 
add shader goes into the service of the material output. We need to change this to be into the volume output. Once you have done that, go ahead and add a new, uh, a new uh, little node here. And this is going to be a math node. Take the value of that and put it into the strength of the emission. Now we're just going to add a color ramp. I'll explain all this stuff in a minute after you've, you have added um, all this stuff. Take, take the color, put it into the emission. Then do a bright contrast. Go ahead and take the color of that and put it into We'll just do the value, the top value of the add of the math um, shader here, or the node. I'm sorry, I keep saying shader. J and change the type of this math node to be multiply. After that, all you need to do is add a attribute. Take this attribute and take the factor and put it into the factor of the color ramp and the factor of the bright contrast. And of course, we need to put it into the color of the bright contrast. Okay, and then in the attribute, we can just take, change the name to be flame. There we go. That is it pretty much for this bottom half. Now, let me explain it. Okay, so basically, what are we doing? We're taking the volume, right? So this part up here is basically going to be for the smoke right here. We're going to add that in a minute. But for the fire, we're basically, it's going to be an emission. So whatever object it's near is going to emit, so it's going to light it up. Right here, this will be our colors of the fire, so um, basically to change the color, you can change it to green, you can change it to blue, you can change it to normal fire. Um, I'll show you a couple of those. This basically multiplies the bright contrast into the strength of the emission, so basically whatever this is, the, I guess, value of this goes into the emission as color. This attribute of the flame basically goes into the bright contrast, which then multiplies it and then goes into the emission. So basically, this flame, whatever part of the flame is lit up more, so I guess in the middle of the flame is going to be lit up more than the outside of the flame, then that will be lit up. That's that part. Now on to the second part. Go ahead and add a, another, or not another head shader, a volume scatter and a volume absor absor absorption if that's how you say it, and then take the volume of that, put it into the bottom of the add shader, the volume scatter, and put it into the top of the add shader, then go ahead and add a volume, well not a volume, a math, well, not a UV map, another math node, take the value of that, put it into the density of the volume scatter, and then also take the volume of that and put it into the density of the volume absorption. Take the bright contrast, so basically add a bright contrast. Take the color of that and put it into the top value of the math node. And of course, change the value to multiply one more time. And then after that, we can add another uh, volume, not a volume absorption, I'm sorry, an attribute. Take the factor of that and put it into the color of the bright and contrast. So that's pretty much it of the name here. Just put density in here. Okay, that is it for this node uh, This node setup here. This, I guess it is a shader since it is a material, um, but that's okay. Now, let me explain it. This part is the smoke, so this is more the density. So if we did render this now, basically the whole thing would be black, because if we removed it, it would be black, but this part basically changes it to where you don't see the whole cube, you just see the smoke inside. So I guess this is the smoke, and also cutting out the parts that aren't the fire itself. Okay, now we need to get into the volume of all. Of all I'm sorry, the value of all of these. So under over here on the fire, we just need to change the multiply to be one, and that's pretty good. Now we need to add the colors of the fire, though. This is hard. I'm gonna be back after I do the colors of the fire because. It's definitely very tedious, and you have to get it just right. Okay, so for now, this will work. Um, I guess it's not the very best, but it's going to work for now. Um, now, let me show you what I did here. So, basically, what I did was just do the colors of the fire. So, that's pretty simple. Orange, red, and white. And I didn't put blue in here, because that's not we're not going to have it that hot. 
Alright, so it's definitely very hard to figure it out because you may be like, oh, I can just take a fire, so an image of fire, and just basically take it and color drop it. But that's not the case because it's not the same. So this will have to work for now. It's not the very best, but it's going to work. It's okay. And yeah. So that is that. Also, the value of these, the alpha value of these need to be, I guess, high at first, so completely at one, and then just drop off eventually. Okay, now, up here, all the values are right other than the math node, so set that to one. And this should work. So if you go into the 3D view, let's actually stay in the node view, node editor. Take a half of the screen and put it into 3D view. Go into the camera. And then press Alt A. Sorry about that. So as you can see, our fire renders. So pause it right when you want to, uh, I guess, render that that frame. Okay. So come on out of that. Come on out just where we can see of the fire. So take the camera out of uh, to be so. Anyway, take the camera to where it's not as close as it was before. So go ahead and render this. As you can see, fire shows up. But it's not the greatest fire, if you, to be exact. Uh, one, because we didn't see it all, because our sampling is at 120, so we need to change that to 10. Another reason is because of the fireflies, but we'll, we'll grab that in a second. Let's also click Use Notes in the world, um, the world editor there. I guess that's what it could be called. Okay, and go ahead and render this out. Okay, so I've changed the frame just a little bit, just where I can see more of the smoke and the fire at the same time. Now you can actually see the uh, fire itself. Now this is not high resolution whatsoever. So if you do want it to get, if you do want it to be high resolution, what you need to do is click your domain object. And basically set the divisions to be a little higher. That's all you need to do for that. So I'm going to change it to be around... Let's just do 90 for my final render. And we'll see how this looks. Okay, so if you do set it to be higher, it's going to go very slow. Like a frame like every 10 seconds. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and bake this. So just go ahead and click a bake. And it should start baking. It shouldn't take too, too long. And that's going to make it go a whole lot faster. Okay, guys, so it's been a pretty long time here. And it has baked about 50% of the way. Um, it's been about, I'd say, an hour. It's been a pretty long time. So, yeah, I'm not going to bake it all the way because it takes so long. But let's go ahead and render this one more time with it a little bit more high resolution. As you can already see, it looks very, very, or not very high resolution, but a lot more than it was before. See? You can see now instead of a, I guess a ball as it was before, it's a, a lot, um, a lot different. So that is it for this tutorial, guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any suggestions for tutorials or anything you need in the comments, uh, we'll post it in the comments below. Or just uh, email me. I have an email that is in my about page on my channel. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.